In this video, we will explore a set of interview questions specifically focused on electrical engineering. What is the slip of an induction motor, the percentage difference between the synchronous speed and s the rotor speed n of an induction motor is called slip. It is denoted by s. The rotor speed of the induction motor is always less than its synchronous speed, why can't a series motor be started on no load, a series motor should never be started at no load. With no mechanical load on the series motor, the current is low, the counter EMF produced by the field winding is weak, and so the armature must turn faster to produce sufficient counter EMF to balance the supply voltage. The motor can be damaged by overspeed. Explain the principle of induction motor, we need to give double excitation to make a DC motor to rotate. In the DC motor, we give one supply to the stator and another to the rotor through brush arrangement. But in induction motor, we give only one supply, so it is interesting to know how an induction motor works, it is simple, from the name itself we can understand that here, the induction process is involved. When we give the supply to the stator winding, a magnetic flux gets produced in the stator due to the flow of current in the coil. The rotor winding is so arranged that each coil becomes short-circuited, the flux from the stator cuts the short-circuited coil in the rotor. As the rotor coils are short-circuited, according to Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, the current will start flowing through the coil of the rotor. When the current through the rotor coils flows, another flux gets generated in the rotor, now there are two fluxes, one is stator flux, and another is rotor flux. The rotor flux will be lagging with respect to the stator flux. Because of that, the rotor will feel a torque which will make the rotor to rotate in the direction of the rotating magnetic field. This is the working principle of both single and three-phase induction motors. What is the difference between a four-point starter and a three-point starter? The starter which consists three terminals is known as the three-point starter. The armature, field and line are the terminals of the three-point starter. In the three-point starter, the no-voltage coil, NVC, is connected in series with the field winding, the starter that consists four terminals and hence called the four-point starter. In four-point starter along with the armature, field and line terminal one additional terminal is added which connected the no-voltage coil parallel with the shunt field winding. In four-point starter the no-voltage winding is connected in parallel with the field winding. The three-point and four-point starter both are similar in construction. But in three-point starter when the speed of the motor varies then the current passes through the field coil and this current affects the no-voltage coil. The four-point starter is designed for reducing the problem. What is meant by regenerative braking? Regenerative braking takes place whenever the speed of the motor exceeds the synchronous speed. This baking method is called regenerative braking because here the motor works as generator and supply itself is given power from the load, i.e. motors. The main criteria for regenerative braking is that the rotor has to rotate at a speed higher than synchronous speed, only then the motor will act as a generator and the direction of current flow through the circuit and direction of the torque reverses and braking takes place. The only disadvantage of this type of braking is that the motor has to run at super synchronous speed which may damage the motor mechanically and electrically, but regenerative braking can be done at sub-synchronous speed if the variable frequency source is available. What is plugging braking? In this method the terminals of supply are reversed, as a result the generator torque also reverses which resists the normal rotation of the motor and as a result the speed decreases. During plugging external resistance is also introduced into the circuit to limit the flowing current. The main disadvantage of this method is that here power is wasted. What is dynamic braking? In this method of braking the motor which is at a running condition is disconnected from the source and connected across a resistance. When the motor is disconnected from the source, the rotor keeps rotating due to inertia and it works as a self-excited generator. When the motor works as a generator the flow of the current and torque reverses. During braking to maintain the steady torque sectional resistances are cut out one by one. What is meant by armature reaction? The effect of armature flux on main flux is called armature reaction. The armature flux causes two effects on the main field flux, the armature reaction distorts the main field flux, it reduces the magnitude of the main field flux, 
which motor has high starting torque and steering current among the DC motor, induction motor or synchronous motor, the DC series motor has the highest starting torque out of all motors and that is why they are used in electrical machinery requiring high starting torque like cranes, hoist, etc. What is a universal motor? A universal motor works on either DC or single phase AC supply. When the universal motor is fed with a DC supply, it works as a DC series motor. When current flows in the field winding, it produces an electromagnetic field. The same current also flows from the armature conductors. When a current carrying conductor is placed in an electromagnetic field, it experiences a mechanical force. Due to this mechanical force, or torque, the rotor starts to rotate. The direction of this force is given by Fleming's left-hand rule, when fed with AC supply, it still produces unidirectional torque. Because, armature winding and field winding are connected in series, they are in same phase. Hence, as polarity of AC changes periodically, the direction of current in armature and field winding reverses at the same time. Thus, direction of magnetic field and the direction of armature current reverse in such a way that the direction of force experienced by armature conductors remains same. Thus, regardless of AC or DC supply, universal motor works on the same principle that DC series motor works. What are some of the most common causes of transformer humming? Electric hum around transformers is caused by stray magnetic fields causing the enclosure and accessories to vibrate. Magnetostriction is a second source of vibration, in which the core iron changes shape minutely when exposed to magnetic fields. Transformer noise is produced by the core. The amount of noise is generally fixed by the design of the transformer. What is the voltage regulation of the transformer? Why is it important? The voltage regulation of a transformer is the percentage change in the secondary voltage from no load to full load condition. Ideally, the secondary voltage remains the same throughout the load, in which case the voltage regulation is zero. But practically it varies with the power factor of the load. The voltage regulation value provides the efficiency of the transformer it is best to prefer a transformer with low voltage regulation. There is a transformer and an induction machine. Those two have the same supply. For which device the load current will be maximum and why? for same rating and same loading. The losses occurred in both devices will be different because of its construction and application. 1. The transformer has no moving parts unlike induction motor, therefore less magnetizing current will be required for its same load operation. Whereas, induction motors have the air gap between its primary, stator, and secondary, rotor, windings which will demand more magnetizing current due to high leakage reactants compared to the transformer. 2. Induction motor will have to overcome the windage losses occurred due to rotation of the rotor to provide same output. That's why induction motor will consume more load current compared to the transformer. How many types of cooling system are there in transformers? There are five types of cooling system in transformers. 1. ONAN, oil natural, air natural. 2. ONAF, oil natural, air forced. 3. OFAF, oil forced, air forced, 4. ODWF, oil direct, water forced, 5. OFAN, oil forced, air forced. What is an ideal transformer? An ideal transformer is an imaginary transformer in which no losses occur at all. In other words, the transformer input power is equal to the output power of the transformer i.e. they have 100% efficiency. It is just a theoretical transformer because there must be some losses in a real transformer. Transformer input power equals transformer output power, P in equals P out. What output power you will get from an ideal transformer and why? An ideal transformer does not have any losses like hysteresis loss, eddy current loss etc. So, the output power of an ideal transformer is exactly equal to the input power. Hence, 100% efficiency. What is transformer efficiency and all-day efficiency? What is the condition for maximum efficiency, transformer efficiency, 
the efficiency of the transformer is given by the output power divided by the input power. Some of the input power is wasted in internal losses of the transformer, efficiency, eta equals output power divided by input power, all day efficiency, the ratio of energy delivered in kilowatt hour to the energy input in kilowatt hour of the transformer for 24 hours is called all day efficiency. All day efficiency equals output in kilowatt hour divided by input in kilowatt hour. Condition for maximum efficiency, the copper loss must be equal to the iron loss, which is the combination of hysteresis loss and eddy current loss. Copper loss equals iron loss. Why the current transformer secondary should not be open when there is current flowing in its primary, the current transformer is essentially a step-up transformer that increases the voltage decreases the current on the secondary side. Under the open secondary condition, the primary current becomes the magnetizing current that generates a very high secondary voltage that can damage the insulation as well as can pose danger to personnel. Why are transformers rated in KVA? 1. The transformer is not a load, it is a device which can transfer power not consume power. If you think that a transformer is a load that's wrong. So as the transformer does not consume power it can only transfer power with increasing and decreasing voltage and current that is why the transformer always rated in KVA, 2, when the transformer is designed the manufacturer does not know which type of load will be connected in future. And the power factor depends upon the load. If an inductive load is connected then the current will be lag which flows through the secondary winding of the transformer as well as the primary winding of the transformer. We also know that pure inductive and pure capacitive load does not practically exist. Every load has some resistance even at inductive or capacitive. For example, a motor is connected to the transformer which is inductive resistive. So the motor draws both reactive and active power. So the power supplied by the transformer is the vector sum of reactive power and active power that is KVA, 3, the copper loss, I square R, occurs due to the flow of the current in the transformer winding and the iron or core loss occurs due to the voltage. These losses do not depend on the power factor so that is why the transformer rating in KVA not KW. What will happen if DC supply is given to the primary of the transformer? mainly transformer has high inductance and low resistance. In case of DC supply there is no inductance, only resistance will act in the electrical circuit. So high electrical current will flow through primary side of the transformer. So for this reason coil and insulation will burn out. Thank you for watching the video, if you found it enjoyable, please click the like button, feel free to leave a comment about the video and share it with your friends, to stay updated with more videos, subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon.